much more effective way it's being used in jewelry stores you know where instead of showing like take pulling out all the jewelry from the rack and showing it on the table they actually show it on this table and only bring out what the customer actually likes and you know it's not just about showing you can actually have a lot of interactive elements in it i mean we have kind of a classification engine which does like if you like this you may also like this kind of a suggestion engine for retail spaces so if you like a particular shoe it would show you a shoe which you may like or based on the buying trends of other customers like people who like this shoe also like this shoe you know there are a lot of things that can be done with this interactive technology on a tabletop surface and you know we see going in future probably this kind of technology will be existing in your daily life so that was one of the products that we launched and i mean we have dedicated teams who work on these different product verticals and are co constantly improvising it and there's a r&d team who keeps on working on new technologies and this is one of another like cool tech piece of technology that we made like imagine like going to a club or a, you know kind of a restaurant and you want to wish your friend happy birthday in a very you know cool way uh, we we did this project where you know like all you have to do is that there's a number on the screen you send a text number like you send a sms to that number and it gets spray painted on the wall like the, whatever message you are sending in the sms it gets spray painted on the wall so i mean this hardware basically is nothing but a it's a sort of a mobile phone with a sim card in it but it does much more than just receiving smss you know like it does this whole art around it which makes the experience really great so uh, say you can play games on this big screen so you're s sitting on your seat say you can navigate through a jukebox collection and request a song on the screen you can uh, like say connect to this display and answer a trivia quiz and if you answer all the questions correct you get a free shopping coupon or a discount coupon to go and shop so things like these you know like th this product basically is addressing the similar uh, kind of customer base who requires experiences to attract consumers or to attract uh, end users and i mean this is also another hit product right now uh, in the market so so currently i mean in the current uh, situation state we are we have served more than 150 almost 200 brands now hitting all across the world these are just to name a few infosys uh, reebok airtel uh, nokia nike motorola and intel so these are our customers worldwide and i mean we are just adding them every day so currently we are exporting to more than 35 countries we sell through distributions and channels uh, we are really proud you know to see this dream of having an indian product innovation going across the globe and you know we continue doing innovations and continue doing the effort towards commercializing it in a much bigger way and a successful way uh, currently you know we are building strong partnerships and for us it's just the beginning i mean we are just a 3 year old company right now but you know we are on verge of uh, expanding uh, very fast and you know we are hiring so if you know anyone or any references <laughs> would be more than happy to get them <laughs> so I'll, so basically this is about what i did in the past or what i have been doing and in, there has been a learning uh, since the beginning and you know i just wanted to share with you a little bit on innovation and how innovation actually how ideas are converted into businesses and it's a learning towards that so like if you were to classify innovations into categories there are two types of innovations one is something that you call sustaining and the second is disruptive sustaining innovations you know a typical example is say windows so windows it started off as a disruptive innovation it changed the way people interacted with the computer but then it went in, went into a sustaining cycle that it uh, it went on getting incremental changes i mean if you see what windows was in 1995 versus what it's there today the final end user applicability is still the same i mean they haven't changed something radically but it's a sustaining innovation i mean there are improvisations over the existing technology and it's a type of innovation i mean there are a lot of great things that have happened same with linux same with probably like mobile technology which is kind of evolving right now it's being advanced now i mean there is sort of a threshold after which you advance the technology like there's a breakthrough at one point and then you keep on advancing it and disruptive innovations basically are you know innovations which come in one shot and they kind of change the way market thinks so a lot of the uh, disruptive innovations i mean i am a personal fan of disruptive innovations i mean technologies that can change the world or change the way people work and i mean some of the examples have been like electrical lighting versus gas uh, lighting or carbon paper versus xerox copier machines and 
the very interesting fact is that all of these technologies were not made by the same company. I mean, why didn't like companies manufacturing carbon paper thought that Xerox was coming their way? Why didn't like uh, companies you know who were making horse carts, horse carriages, saw that the electric or the so the diesel engine or the petrol-based engine would replace their market? The fact is that when people get into a sustaining innovation cycle, they tend to kind of block their thinking on uh, what's next. And I think what is really what is really required in a company is to think out of the box all the time. And uh, the history says that usually there have these all these disruptive ideas were actually out of startups or smaller companies which have become bigger companies today. I mean, just to give you some examples like Google, Sun, Amazon, Cisco, Microsoft, all of them started out of a garage or a university or a lab. So, I mean, Sun started out of a lab in Stanford. So, like, great ideas don't require a lot of money and a lot of kind of an infrastructure. Uh, they require a good team of people. So, means what I observed when I was in the US is that they follow something called a Silicon Valley culture. I'll talk about more about Silicon Valley culture and what it is in my presentation, but there were a lot of common things, you know, like in, in startups, like they build disruptive products, they attract investors at the right point in time. And I mean, for me, it's a way to contribute towards the economy. It means if I start a company, I'm creating employment for people.